Hey everybody, thank you for tuning in. This is Adam from the N Plus One Podcast. I'm so glad that you found this, however you did. The N Plus One Podcast is all about hobbies, passions, obsessions, just whatever drives us crazy and fuels our interests. And today I am joined by a very special guest, one of uh, my good friends, someone I've known for, man, maybe 14 years maybe um him and i go way back it's my friend jed Roberson, and today we're going to talk about um, photography videography and visual arts uh, our conversation was really interesting and i hope that you enjoy it but sometimes people want to know what does n plus one mean and n plus one is all about how as we follow our pursuits and our passions how that journey that obsessive journey is basically never over there's always room for one more we always have one more thing that we want to collect one more sofa in the dollhouse one more painting we want to paint one more mountain to climb one more guitar in the guitar stand we always need one more and plus one that is true for our passions and hobbies and obsessions and that is what this podcast is all about let's get over to jed he is an amazing artist and photographer uh, we're going to get into it with him. Let's get going. Uh, hello and welcome, everybody. This is Adam from Miller's Custom Guitars and the new N Plus One podcast. You know, we're seven episodes in. I need to stop calling it the new podcast. It's new to me. It's new to my heart. I'm joined today by a really special guest. I'm Look, they're all special to me, just like all these podcasts. They're all special to me. They're all my babies. Um, but this is a special guest. He's a friend of mine. I've known him since he was a wee little, wee little lad. <laughs> He's all grown Probably up now. Not little, but yeah, young. <laughs> He's all grown up now, uh, off being a proper adult, living his adult life. But I've known him for a while. Actually, you were, you actually probably, were you in high school when we met? Because uh, I've known you for, so we've been in town for 14 years. So whatever you are, minus 14. Yeah, were you I've in, been you, in high school. Yeah, you were in high school when we met. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, you were, you were, you had a couple years left. So. Yeah, so this is my this is my good friend Jed Roberson, and we go way back. And um, I've known Jed um, through we met through church, and we I, I would say primarily knew each other through music, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mostly that, yeah. through music. You know, your dad was the uh, worship director for our church, and you are a great musician, phenomenal. Uh, pianist, you you can sing, you can play guitar. I always felt like you didn't play guitar enough, but I'm just a guitar player, so I kind of feel like that yeah. a lot anyway. But you're you're just a phenomenal um, uh, pianist. Thank but you. that's not what we're talking about because no. you went off and uh, somehow carved out a career, like pulling out your iPhone and snapping pictures of like selfies and pictures of stuff, right? You. <laughs> Yeah, I became an influencer, and now I'm uh, down that deep and dark road. No, I'm just kidding. You yeah. became, you got a career in visual arts. I did, yeah. If, yeah, I guess we can call it that. We can call it filmmaking. We can call it photography. We can yeah. call it kind of whatever we want. But yeah, sort of fell into a career that started from a passion of mine. So I guess that's what yeah. your podcast is all about. And Right. And so that's, that's exciting, exactly yeah. what this podcast is, which is just following our passions and interests um, and talking about them and diving into them. Um, so let's talk about it. So let's first talk about, uh, introduce what it is that the topic even is. You know, I said visual arts. It's a little bit bigger than that. It's not just photos. It's photos. It's um, film. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Filmography? Uh, videography. Sort of videography. There we go. You do commercials. You do a bunch of stuff. Why don't you, I like to say, like, describe it as if you were talking to like a five-year-old, sure, a like a five-year-old plus, like, cause okay. you know, we're all adults, but describe the whole thing, uh, what it is. Um, and then I'll, we'll transition to how you, maybe how you got into it. So what is visual arts? Yeah. I mean, uh, visual arts the way you do it. Yeah. I, I think that's a good way to put it is the way that I perceive it. And um, I think visual arts is really anything artistic that's visual. <laughs> um, but to me, it's more in line with like the photography and film world. So that's sort of how I kind of find myself and mm -hmm. kind of niche myself in, into this uh, realm of visual arts. But yeah. Yeah. So, but for you, that includes photography. 
that includes videography, mm -hmm. right? Totally, yeah. Which obviously, if you don't know photography, photos, videography, moving imagery. So, right. That's so the, the or the fifth grade version, like you said. Either way, you've got some sort of thing that takes like images in your hand. Yeah, right? and I think in in large part, visual arts can be it can be a, a, a whole slew of things. But for me, it's it's basically photography, whether whether whatever the the method is by achieving that uh, that photo or videography, it's just at it at its core, it's just those two things. So, pretty self explanatory. Okay, so and this is this is where this is where I'm like I literally describe basically everything I know about it, and this is where I'm asking questions and just correct me if I'm way out of base. Like snapping the photo or taking the the video the video is like just part of the art, right? Because there's also like sure yeah what you do after whether it's color grading or um photoshopping or i don't know whatever you yeah. do that's that's like the other like big part of the art artistry in what you do is that is that yeah, about no, right? totally 100 and i would say even much more so there's kind of this running joke in in filmmaking uh called when something's not going according to plan on set they say oh we'll just fix it in post right um which sure. I, it's probably the same in music too but um, now there's this new thing called uh, fix it in pre. So in pre-production, <laughs> sure, uh, is kind of the the name of the game nowadays. You in in both photography and, and videography, there's these kind of three three realms. So we have pre-production, production, and post-production, um, and all of those play a, a huge crucial role in in getting the content that you want. It's not just the production side of things. So. Um, yeah, I spend a lot of my time in my day to day working on the pre production and the post production. Um, but my favorite part is the production. That's where you get to, like, you know, put uh, the rubber to the road and really yeah. make some cool stuff. So that is, yeah, you're totally right. There's there's so much more that goes into it. And in terms of photography, there's you can uh, there's retouching for photos. In terms of for video, there's obviously the whole editing thing, which is a whole other beast in and of itself. So oh, yeah, I yeah, know. Yeah, I mean it, man. <laughs> so, I, I yeah, feel a lot like going I'm... on. I feel like I'm a, a kid playing with Lego blocks, you know, when I'm trying to build a, a skyscraper. But uh, you know, I'm I'm in it with my YouTube videos and these, even these podcasts. But yeah, man, let's talk. let's talk about how did you even get started in this? Because I mean, did you go to school for it? Did you just start fiddling around for it? I mean, how did you get started? Started? Yeah. Doing this? So I mean, I think what was your gateway drug? That's what question yeah, I was like asking. <laughs> I like the gateway drug, and I, I guess my answer to that question is my family provided me the gateway drug, so props to them on uh, giving me, well, I guess they didn't even give me, I, I took their their digital camera, you know, like the family digital camera. That's Thanks, all, Mom! Yeah, this make is mine sure now. a gateway drug. Uh, but no, they were super, uh, super supportive, and in, in, I think they kind of could tell from a young age that I really liked making videos with my brother and, you know, with the family camcorder, and then... I remember one time we were on like a family trip to going on a little like day trip to Yosemite and a cousin was in town. He had this really nice big like DSLR camera and I was like, oh, the thing is sick. And my parents had this like crummy old digital camera and I was like, I'm going to take this with, with me to Yosemite and we're going to take some photos. And I remember like just being so intrigued by all of the like the settings and the different like picture profiles and everything that was going on in the camera. And I really had a good time um, just trying to match what my cousin was getting with this super nice DSLR camera. And I, that was the first time I really remember as like a middle schooler or whatever, really loving photography and, and just as like a, a hobby. And so, I mean, my family gave me like a GoPro. I'm a pretty like sporty, adventurous person. So they gave me a GoPro when I was in high school or maybe like early college for Christmas. And I just like took off running with that thing and just loved filming everything I could um, with that. And I have some like super dumb videos that I look back on now. I'm like a little embarrassed about with <laughs> filming I with those things. I remember you know? one <laughs> of them. I remember, yeah, was didn't, one? wasn't there, didn't you like in a super like cheesy corny way, like ask someone to go to the prom? Like, didn't you cut a video together yeah, to ask someone to go to the prom or something? I don't think it was prom, but it was definitely a, a video like, oh, or like, like a, dance, a, a or dance in college. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, and it was super corny and I was like playing guitar or something. <laughs> yeah. And that was like, fun. go to the dance. Woo. You know, like, yeah. <laughs> I don't but, even no, know. it was pretty funny, but, and I, I think they went with me. I'm not sure. There you go. You got a date out of it. I think it worked. So, yeah. But yeah, no, I, 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 from a young age, I think I really liked the, the video side of things. I, there's like a lot of funny home videos, you know, that we've looked sure. over uh, the years. My dad got all of the, 
like the family videotapes changed from tape to digital years ago and we watched some of them and there's just some unsavory things that my brother and I filmed, but uh, it's uh, it's all in good fun. <laughs> but yeah, I think that was like that gateway drug, you know, and I, nice. and it's kind of like spiraled from there. And um, I mean, there's like a whole, a whole journey from to where I'm at now, but I mm -hmm. think that's where it started for sure. Yeah. So did you go to school for it or did you just learn on your own or did you Yeah, go? so I didn't. Um, I went to YouTube University um, for <laughs> filmmaking and photo. Me too. What do you um, know? Which is, yeah, which is super helpful. But um, I, I got a degree in English, so not, not so relevant, but I guess kind of it is in the writing scape. I don't do a ton of narrative stuff, so I don't write, um, but I, I do write a mean email. So if you ever need like some... Me too. Uh, some, <laughs> Some really well worded emails I can do that for you. But I got complimented yeah, I got complimented on a work email today. They're like, Oh, that's very professional. I'm like, Yeah, I went to college. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's all yeah. I mean, I love a good email and I, I think the writing background definitely gave me um or the degree in, in English writing gave me sort of this basis for storytelling. And I think that's a mm -hmm. big part of what I do now is even though I'm on like the, the production side of things, I, I do get to tell stories. Um, and that's what, that's what I'm passionate about is telling stories that matter. And right. I don't know if that sounds cliche to you at all, but that's like really important to me is no sort of, yeah, telling stories that matter. So that's kind of right. my, my motto. It's not cliche at all to me because I'm making guitar repair videos, right? That's what Miller's custom guitars. That's my yeah, channel. Yeah. But I also, I want it to be somewhat narrative. You know, I have a script mm. that I write and I want it to be cohesive. I'm trying to I'm, tell stories, right? You know, I'm trying it to be educational and, and, and make sense and record guitar tones. Good. You know, I'm trying to make an interesting video that all that stuff, the yeah. way I want to make it. But you know, at, at the end of the day, I'm just trying to make me tell a story, you know, of, of yeah. whatever the repair is or whatever. What totally. are some getting into the, some of the questions, what are some misconceptions that, that people might have about getting, you know, doing what you do of, yeah. of taking photos, making videos. That's a great question. And I think there's a lot, probably my favorite one. And this isn't so common anymore. Cause as you probably know, like you can make money doing just about anything nowadays, but yeah. like the, the big one for me back in the day was, um, I remember I would come home back to Tuolumne County and people would be like, Oh, what are you up to nowadays? I'm like, Oh, I live in LA and I work in film or I'm a photographer or whatever. And people would be like, Oh, what else do you do? It's like, oh, I just do that. And they're like, okay, you can make money doing that? And I'm like, yeah, it's like a, it's a, it's a business. Like, and they, they think they're, people get confused sometimes. If you're not making like major motion pictures, then how are you making money doing filmmaking and, and photography and things like that? So that was, that was a pretty funny one. I think, I mean, now obviously you can, uh, people make money playing video games and stuff. Um, right. Or yeah, making money, just like taking pictures of themselves and putting it on Instagram. So yeah. there is like being right. an influencer and being like a gamer. I think that's the next one. That's the thing that people are confused about now. It's like, okay, but how do you make money? And well, the world has changed and it's a crazy place. So yeah, yeah. very thankful that that's something that I can do for a living and make money and support myself and mm -hmm. and do that but another awesome. i think misconception is i can't i'm a big gearhead i think i mean obviously you are too with guitars and, <laughs> yeah and, maybe yeah <laughs> and I, i'm the same way and I, it, obviously like we we want like the newest thing what's what's biggest and what's best and it's um, literally the name of the show right yeah plus exactly. one. what's plus next one. yeah for sure and <laughs> i think for me like it's hard to get let me figure out a way to how to say this it's hard to not dwell on like the gear you know it's hard for me to yeah, be like totally. all right i want to go out and make great videos i want to go out and take great photos i need the best camera to do so and mm -hmm. to be honest you don't um one of my favorite i don't know if you've ever watched casey nice that stuff on youtube but no he's this uh youtuber from i guess he's still a youtuber but he kind of got me excited about like storytelling years and years ago i was working at a college and just like not loving my job and my situation and just kind of wanted to make a change. And I watched this guy's videos every day. He was like a, a daily vlogger. And he said this line, and I don't want to give him credit for it because he probably didn't come up with it, but he said in one of his videos, the best camera is the one you have with you. So that is to me, my entire, like I've tried to take that with me um, everywhere I go in the world and in, in my job too. So often it's hard to get excited about filming stuff if you don't have the latest and greatest right um you want that like that nice camera you want the the perfect lights and all these sorts of things and even the great locations but 
sometimes what you what you need is just your phone. And so maybe when later in the podcast, you and I can I'll go through and show you some some quick tips for like iPhone camera hacks. Yeah, and stuff I'm like looking that. forward so, to that. Yeah, yeah definitely. Cool. But I, I think in general, there's like there's so many misconceptions about like gear um mm-hmm. and, and especially the film world photography maybe not so much but the film world. like here's like my cinema camera i don't know if you can see this Ooh, what, okay go ahead hold on wait hold it up come on tell us tell us tell you hey look you're you're a nerd tell us yeah, what I'm it is okay so what this is this is thing new to me but this is a oh. canon cinema camera it's like their entry level camera so you can this is like it's bare bones so this is what it looks like yeah, can, really come on, on don't it. tell us canon give us the what is it it's a canon okay, what this is a canon c70 if you can see okay i can't see there. it but, but canon c70 this is the baseline of like a entry level cinema camera in essence this is like a good like starting point camera and nice. it's new to me and it's like a great camera more like better than anything i need um, for what I do, because usually for like big projects, we'll rent big gear and stuff. And it's really fun to like go through and go to a rental house and be like, okay, we have budget to play with. Let's get an Alexa Mini and throw some like really cool Vista Primes on there, or whatever the case may be for um, for camera gear. But I think in general, it's hard to get, it's very easy to get sidetracked on the camera gear, right? You just need to show up and you need to use the equipment that you have at your disposal. To the, like, yeah. And, to the best of your ability. So I think that's a misconception for sure is that right. you need all the best stuff, but you don't, you just need to have an idea, a good story and go out there and, and tell it. Right. So just, you know, my, my background is guitars, as you know. Um, yeah. And sometimes I, I sh- you know, I've famously always showed up with my pedal board, right? Even when I play acoustic guitar, I show up with my pedal board. Um, but the reason is because I feel like it's a, it's a, it's a critical extension of how I play guitar, right? And I know what every single thing does sure. and I, I know how to use every single thing is not hindering how I play. It's it's extending how I'm what I'm capable of doing, right? If I was to show up with someone else's pedal board and not know how to do it, it would actually limit how I play, right? No, that's totally, kind yeah. of that's kind of how what you're saying is like it's more important to know how to use the tools at hand rather than to show up with the fanciest thing and not know how to use it. 100%. Yep. I mean, yeah. I think there's there's a world where you can like truly know equipment that's not yours or whatever cuz in in the production world we use a lot of like rented equipment. I think that's pretty common, but mm-hmm. you do have to know what you're using and know all of the features. You have to know like everything your your tool can do in order to have that tool be a worthy, you know, help on on whatever you're working on. Similar to what you just said, but I think in general, it's so like I, I think you can agree with this. I just froth when like new camera gear comes out. It's like, <laughs> oh, that's so sick! Like, and we all talk about it. Like you oh all, gosh. like all of the filmmaker friends of mine, we all are like, oh, yeah. did you see the new specs on this camera, this I'm thing? Like, and it's yeah. like, I'm the it's, same way. Yeah, for, super exciting. For, yeah, I'm the same way for guitar stuff, and I'm I'm getting that way for, you know, podcast. Uh, Sweetwater has a sale on podcasting stuff right now. I'm like, <laughs> oh nice, <laughs> whatever. Yeah, oh, um, I love Sweetwater. Before I move on to the to the, to the next question, I do have a question on your camera, the one you held up. How many of those buttons do you actually know what they do? <laughs> I know what they all do, and they're all customized too. So I can <laughs> I can change what they all do, and I know what they all do. So I actually don't even have to look at it. I can just feel. And I know oh, what it is. yeah. So it's like it's like an accordion. You're playing it by feel. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, it's the same what with are, guitar, right? So. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's your instrument, man. Yeah. What is what are some of your biggest challenges as, as in your visual arts? career challenges are an interesting one i think in large part like having it be a career presents different challenges than it were if it were just a hobby you know if we're just a hobby then you're you're probably looking at like time and money to get to go places right i'm a big fan of like nature photography right and that's kind of what i do in the photography world is like landscape photography and that 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 presents its own challenges but i think in when it's like a professional in the professional Mm -hmm. realm um I think the the biggest challenge for me is not taking things personally. Um, as sure. weird as that sounds, no, um, I get it. There, it's a cutthroat industry. Um, the bottom line is the most important thing, and that's money. And if um, for some reason you 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 basically need to have something to offer in the industry, and if you don't, then it's like super cutthroat. So I try not to take things personally when I don't get a job, or when someone else gets a job over me, or. Um, a client doesn't like what we did that happens on occasion. It, it is really tough not getting discouraged in an industry that is um, so about 
um, results. And um, you have to take it with a grain of salt. Yeah, I think we all we all win some, we all lose some in this industry. Definitely, and that's just part of it, man. And I I really do think I'm blessed to to be in this industry, but it is is taxing and it is. Uh, anxiety riddled but that's mm -hmm. all part of it everything nothing good in life comes easy so that's what i uh like to say so yeah sure no problem so we talked about challenges what about this whole thing fills your bucket why do you even do it yeah i love that question because i think um, i was talking to my girlfriend last week we were up in alaska for her her birthday and i was just kind of lucky because I, I ended up coming from a, a, a work trip. So I had my camera with me and I never get to shoot things, um, for fun anymore, unless I'm on like vacation or something, you know, right. Cause sure. I'm, I'm always working and I don't, when I'm not working, it's hard to justify spending that time, uh, making videos and whatnot. But I had my camera with me and I'm like, okay, let's let's film some stuff and my girlfriend was gracious enough to be the the subject she hates being on camera as do i but um she was she, she was your muse this day. yes exactly and she she was very nice to let me like film her walking around and whatever but we were just visiting these like epic landscapes like on a glacier cruise doing like cool hikes and like driving through the mountains and obviously alaska I, i'm sorry just, i missed where you said you were at where were you at we were in alaska yeah okay wow um and so just the scale and the enormity of it all was incredible and to be able to capture that on camera was just like it brought me back to why i do what i do um, right. and that nice. that is really what fills my bucket it's those moments with um with people that i care about whether it's working with friends or getting to film with my girlfriend in like one of the most beautiful places on the planet Dope. i think those are the moments where you're like all right even if no one sees like this footage um of this glacier and mckenna or whatever like this is what fills my bucket and i was so i was frothing just like looking at these frames on camera, I'm like, dude, this is insane. Like it looks so good. And I think that it, it truly is what keeps me pushing for the yeah. next big thing, you know? And I think it's those moments of like, okay, I'm meant to be doing what I'm doing. And I'm nice. really, really thankful that that's the case. Yeah. One for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one for everybody else. One for me. Yeah. I kind of did that. Um, I recorded a YouTube video this last weekend and the whole thing is I'm trying to get the sounds of Brian May, who's one of my favorite guitar players. And yeah, I, totally. I had the, uh, See, I had queen? AC, uh, yeah. in queen. And I had the AC 15 turned all the way up. Like he has an AC 30. I'll turn it all. The way. I mean, literally all the knobs pegged nice. into the normal channel. And then I had a, a treble booster, like a vintage style treble booster pedal that I borrowed from a friend. And then I had, I had made a guitar that was like Brian May's guitar. And I was plugging okay. into that. And I, like, I knew it would be cool and I'd written the script and I'd filmed the video and I actually already filmed like the reaction, you know, like cut away, come back. Like that was the most amazing sound I'd ever heard. Right. <laughs> but yeah. then afterwards, then I recorded the sound clips and it was the most amazing guitar sound I'd ever had. So I was like, yeah, this one's for me, you know, like, mm. you know, heck with the al algorithm, you know, or whatever. But that's yeah, what it so, takes sometimes though. It's just yeah, like one messing around me. and yeah. yeah, you get. It's, that's what I love about music too, right? It's like sometimes I'll just be in like logic messing around on the keyboard. I'm like, oh, that was tasty. Like, let's run yeah. that back. And I think, I mean, that's that's art in general, right? You get to you get to try things and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But regardless, you're trying and you're making cool stuff. So, so we talked about challenges and we talked about um, fills your bucket. What about maybe you, maybe you could tell us a story of a specific bad experience of where maybe everything went wrong, where crap hit the fan, or uh, maybe you had a gig that went south, or I don't know if you can feel comfortable telling us a story. Yeah. I mean, I have plenty of stories on things that go bad. I don't want to throw your voice, the bus, voice, but... voice cracked right there. The story's so bad. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. <laughs> I hit puberty like this this month. I'm like 29, but no. Yeah, um, coming from the person with the deepest voice, the I've deepest ever voice ever. Yeah, it's no problem. I can, I can be a, a voiceover <laughs> artist, but no. Yeah, so I, a specific story. Yeah, that'd be tough without like calling anyone out. I'll just say things go wrong often on set, and it's how sure. you handle things that uh, that go wrong. I was in. <laughs> Here's a story, and I, and I don't think they would mind me sharing, but I was in Iceland a few years ago, and just seemingly everything was going wrong. We were on a music video shoot. 
and it was like picturesque. We were making music for for a, a guy based in Orange County who does instrumental rock and super talented guitarist and really just a really nice guy. And we were in Iceland and we just had like, when you're on like a low budget thing, you're just trying to make make it like I said, like make make the art with what you got. So sure. that's what we were trying to do, and we 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 got some great stuff, but just our everything was going wrong and nothing was sure. going our way and. Um, it mainly revolved around the weather. So we were in South East Iceland in a little town called Vik. Um, and we had to, uh, basically work our way around the Eastern part of the Island, go up North. However, a huge snowstorm came in. We were stuck in this town for like three or four days and we're like, well, our, our <laughs> weather window is evaporated. I don't know what uh -oh. we're going to do. We, we were there for like 10 days, maybe trying to get this whole music video filmed around the whole Island. And it's just like. All the roads are shut. We couldn't go west. We couldn't go east. We're stuck in this oh, little no. tiny town. And we're like, okay, what's going to happen? And um, the next morning, it was like 4 a.m. Oh, no. Granted, we're there during the winter. Um, of course. And so daylight is minimal. So we have like maybe from like 10 a.m. to 4 p.m.-ish of good light uh, or just light in general. Um, and so we're trying to get to this glacier by 8 a.m. the next morning. And luckily, the roads had opened. <laughs> There was no way that those roads should have been opened and we oh, should gosh. not have been driving on them. But here we are at like 4 or 5 a.m. just like puddling along on uh, this like icy road and it's super windy. It, there's like oh, snow yeah. banks everywhere and no one else was on the road. We're literally the only ones because you should not be driving in that weather. But right. um, we had to. We literally had to get, get to this, this glacier. <laughs> um and we get there, and luckily we get there in time-ish. We're like 30, 45 minutes late. Oh, um, and we have a group taking us up on top of the glacier, and they take you up in these big, like, lifted vans, essentially, that are four-wheel four, like, four -wheel drive converted, and they have, like, huge ice snow tires on them. And they drive you on, literally, on top of the glacier. It's the coolest thing. But okay. we get up there, and it's gale force winds. We're, oh, like, gosh. we're talking, like, maybe 60, 70-mile-an-hour winds. The like in order to film up there, we have to park the van, and so say the wind's coming from this direction, we park the van, and then whew, the wind is blowing down the face of the glacier, and we can only film in maybe like a ten by fifteen foot area behind the van because that's blocking the wind. That's just blocking the wind. I get yeah. It. <laughs> and so anytime you step outside of that, it's like you're risking getting blown off this glacier. Oh my so, gosh, that's terrifying. Yeah. We spent about four or five hours up there and we got nothing. We maybe got a shot. Um, oh, and it's, mind you, it's probably zero degrees with a negative wind chill. It's just so, so cold. And oh, gosh. luckily we could like the director of photography and myself, we could bundle up and we had like all our Gore-Tex and like gloves <laughs> on and everything. And the but artist then, is out there freezing his butt off. Oh yeah. The dude's he's, trying to play guitar. He's in costume, there. right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So poor guy, he was miserable. And so that was just like the theme of the trip, but we got a lot of good stuff. Um, you know, I think this is quickly becoming my favorite question to ask people. Yeah. You no, know? it's good. And I, I think some people probably in whatever their hobby or adventure might be, uh, there's probably some good stories out there, but yeah, yeah. bad gigs. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Um, I always, I always like to ask people, you know, originally I thought of these questions cause I was thinking about guitar players, but you know, and I wanted to ask people about DIY if you, you know, built a guitar, but I found that DIY kind of applies to everything. Do you have, um, a technique, maybe, uh, something that you feel like you've developed on your own that you maybe haven't seen other people do and you feel like maybe your way's better? Um, well, sure. I can, I can, I think a lot of the things that I do are better than other people, but that's not <laughs> good to compare yourself to other people so much. But I, I do think that, um, in, in my line of work and kind of my passion, you, it's really hard to be good at one thing. Everyone that I know, all my friends that are in the industry, um, we're all like jack of all trades types. Okay. Um, none of us are super good at one thing or another. There's a few people I know that are like insanely talented writers. They can come up with ideas like on the top of their head or off the top of their head like that. Like, and I, it takes me days to try to come up with an idea for like concepts sometimes. Um, I know some people who are incredibly gifted. They can pick up a camera and make things look 10 times better than I could just without any lighting, just natural light. And it's, I think that's like God given, honestly, because I don't yeah. understand how they can do it. And then there's people that are so good at communication on set. And there's people that are really good with, with talent and, and all, I mean, go down the list. There's, there's all these sorts sure. of things, but I think what makes you in this industry and what 
I think I bring to the table is I'm a well-rounded person. I can pick up a camera and I can shoot well. I can make them like, like I said, <laughs> craft a finely worded email. Um, I can, I do a lot of spreadsheets. So and budget tracking, spreadsheets. so, oh, yes, I love spreadsheets, so man. that's the bulk of my job, but no, I think in, in general, you kind of have to play all fields. So yeah, that's kind of what I do. And that would be sort of my answer to that, I guess. Okay. Nice. What about, do you have any, as your journey as a visual artist, do you have any, what you might consider like a guilty pleasure, like maybe other people, when you're talking about this, you maybe wouldn't mention that you do it or if they caught you doing it or saw you doing it, they might look down at you or like, like, why are you doing it that way? Or you know, like, don't you know, people don't do that or don't do it anymore, or, but you do it anyway. Cause you love it. Or you think it's better. Or... I can't, th I've, I've thought about this question and I honestly can't think of anything. Okay. I think the cool thing about the, the art scene, especially here in LA is like, no one's going to, I mean, maybe behind your back, but no one's going to tell you you're doing something wrong or uh, scoff at you for doing whatever. And I think in general, it's like a pretty supportive community. Um, obviously, it's cutthroat and there's going to be times where people are, they're going to just like disengage and they're going to try not to uh, like walk all over you. But yeah, I think in in my circle of friends and, and colleagues, everything's pretty supportive. And I don't think anyone would like scoff at you for nice. filming X, Y, Z or working nice. with, I think the biggest thing is working with like people that aren't, aren't the best people. So it is what it is. And I think a lot of people here are supportive and I know that's the case in other professions too. So in the, in awesome. the arts realm, you know, well, how very supportive. That sounds yeah. amazing. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, this is a question I love to ask, which is, um, as you think back as you're at your time doing visual arts and photography and all that stuff, what do you consider your favorite or your best moment? Maybe it's like a specific like image you created or a specific thing that was created. Like maybe this mm. was like the best thing I ever did, or maybe it's just like a specific moment. Like you were, like you were talking about when you were in Alaska, like you looked around like, man, this was this is just like the best moment ever. Or what, what do you think when you look back at, at all this, that was maybe yeah, your favorite your That's a great question. I, I think that's what drives us a lot of time is like searching for that, like uh, euphoria, you know? Sure. Um, the kick but, of adrenaline. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. And I think for me, I, the first time I saw something I made on TV, that was pretty cool. Um, that's cool. What yeah. Was it? So we, we filmed a, a golf commercial um, and it was just me and like three of my really, my closest friends and then a whole crew of other people. But that was the core of who, who worked on the project. And I got to produce this commercial for a golf company and I, I'm a huge golf fan. As you can see, there's like a Augusta national sign. Right okay. Here. Um, but yeah, we got to make this golf commercial and it was just, it was cool. Obviously my favorite thing about my job is working with my friends. Um, I don't remember the last time I worked on a gig and I didn't have a friend on the project. Um, and that is like so rare, I think in the grand scheme of, of, uh, sure. occupations. And I feel very blessed that that's the case. And when I got to do this particular project for a company that I love, um, on a topic I love, and then we just got to be super creative with it. And it turned out like incredible. Um, and we're all just sitting around one day and all of a sudden came on TV and just so cool to see that. And then I even had like my brother text me. He's like, did you guys make this? I saw this on TV and we're like, yeah, it was us. so I mean, nice. those moments are randomly That's off. So I cool. Mean, yeah. I mean, it's, it's cool to see that. And I think that feeling of like, you know, you're so satisfied and you're, um, I got yeah. paid to do yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like not only am I seeing my thing, like it's cool to see my thing. I got paid to do that. Yeah. <laughs> like no. with money. <laughs> exactly. No, I think that that's a good point too, but it's, uh, that was pretty cool. I mean, a lot of the experiences I have too, like, like I said, in like Alaska, I wasn't working, but in, I'm, and this is about hobbies too. Mm -hmm. Um, just having a camera in your hand in a cool place is a pretty cool thing and getting to share that with other people is my favorite. So, yeah. Nice. Okay. So, uh, we're going to kind of transition towards the end. Um, one thing I like to ask about is if someone is thinking about getting into photography, for example, what advice would you have? And you started with, you said, just use whatever you've got, right? Mm -hmm. Like, and I've heard this before, like if someone's trying to get into photography, in most cases, 
the best camera available is the one that's in their pocket, right? You got an yep. iPhone usually, or maybe a, you know, maybe you have a Android or whatever, sure. but you know, I mean, that's got a super high make a pixel camera, you know, and all that stuff. But, you know, this is kind of a reoccurring theme that we talked about when Keenan was on the show, when Gabe was on the show, you know, he said, you know, just get, you don't have to start fancy. If you're trying scotch, just get, just try a, a know, scotch. Like, try yes. a Freud or something. Yeah. Like, get yes. the one from Walmart and try <laughs> yeah. start there. You know, even when uh, this episode actually releases tomorrow, as we film this, Josh, we talked about prospecting and he says, you don't have to start with a bunch of equipment, you know, just go down get started you know if you're starting to start small but so where would you say for advice for beginners if someone wants to get into um photography how would you advise them to start what would you tell them to skip and how would you tell them to maybe start their journey yeah um i think it's just putting yourself out there obviously like what you said is the biggest piece right is having a story you want to tell and then having the the most basic ability to tell it um and that is by way of usually of like a phone. And nowadays iPhones are insane in what they can do. And I'll show you a few little right. tricks that I've used a lot um, with the iPhone features. It's like insane. I used to travel with a camera, like a big DSLR, like the camera I'm filming with here. We would travel with that and it weighs like three pounds and I would bring it everywhere with me and great, get some great pictures. But I'm like, it's not the, the cost benefit here isn't great. So I think people should weigh like kind of the, the cost benefit analysis of what they want out of, filmmaking or what they want out of photography but in general i would say save your money skip film school uh don't major in photography maybe uh go to youtube university i've learned so much on youtube it's insane but the the place that i've learned the most is on set it's going and being on set and i some i learn the most about roles that i'm not even working in so if i'm if i'm working as like a a production manager i'll go on set and i'll watch the camera department and they'll be building cameras, the AC will be pulling focus and, and fidgeting with the camera stuff. And that's so intriguing to me because I love gear, like I said, but um, getting to watch other people do their jobs um, just gives you so much insight and you see how things operate on set and you see um, the relationship between clients and, uh, and, the, and the professionals working there. And you can see how the photographer is stepping in and doing their thing. And so there's, I mean, there's so many roles that, that happen on a commercial set um, specifically, even more so on a, even more so on a major motion picture uh, yeah. set. But I think that's the biggest thing is like, get out there, get experience. I, I have a hard time encouraging people to go work for free, but there's a difference between working for free and working with some sort of pay, some sort of payback, you know, it's, it's, can you go and PA on a, uh, a film set and get uh, references and get all sorts of connections? connections yes, that's and, worth it. Yeah. Um, but if you're just going out there and you have a decent camera and you're taking pictures for somebody's business just for experience, I would say let someone else do that. Yeah. You can be working yeah, on something you're passionate you about. Yeah, you can't pay your rent with exposure bucks. Yeah, no, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, maybe you can nowadays in 2022. I don't know. I don't but know. Uh, in general, I, I would say let someone that's like let the other people do the stuff that's not filling your cup, you know? Yeah. You want to you want to be working on stuff that's pushing you to your goals, and you want to be um, filming or photographing things that you're passionate about. If if sure. there's no uh, money in it, then make sure there's passion behind it. No, oh, that's great. That's great advice. If there's no money behind it, everyone listen. If there's no money behind it, <laughs> at least make sure that there's a bunch of passion behind it. And that's why I'm making this podcast. There's no money behind it, but I'm super passionate about it. Yeah, I, I, I do want to circle back. Um, send me your money. No, there's no money. There's there's no there's no uh, there's like what I was talking about with Gabe. There's no Patreon. You know, there's no uh, you know sponsors really. Not yet. Just, not yet. Someday maybe. Today's episode has been brought to you by family. I just got back from a weekend long road trip where we um, remembered a family member who had passed away. And so I just, I just encourage you to take this time to appreciate your family. Uh, if you have family, whatever your family is, you know, I'm not discounting that some of us are biological families sometimes aren't all that great. I've been very blessed to have amazing biological family and also my uh, married family. My in-laws are phenomenal. But sometimes we don't have 
the, the biological families aren't that great. Um, but, you know, sometimes we get to choose who our family is. And um, whoever you consider family, I, I encourage you to um, take some time this week and uh, just call someone that you love and tell them that you love them. You know, uh, my mom passed away a year ago, and I really wish I could call her. So why don't you do that? Call your mom, call your dad, uh, call someone that means a lot to you, and uh, or just send them a text message or something, say, thinking about you, love you, miss you, because you never know. Also, I just wanted to encourage you, if you haven't yet, to head on over to the Facebook, where we have the Facebook group. Um, that group has started to gain some traction, and we got some members that have joined up. And so far, it's just been me posting. So when you go over there, make sure that you drop in a post and say, hi, I'm new to the group, and make sure that you are sharing what you are passionate about. So far, it's just been me talking about these episodes. I want to know what you are interested in. Tell me if you're um, learning underwater basket weaving or pottery or photography or um, fire juggling or I don't know, whatever. Show me what you're interested in. I want to hear about it. Uh, that's on Facebook. You just do a search for groups, uh, M plus one podcast, obsessed with obsession group, and it should come right up. Uh, it's a private group, but if you try to add, I will add you right away. Other than that, um, we're going to get back to the show. Jed has some great stuff for us. This is a really fun conversation. Hey, I did want to circle back to, uh, you said one thing at the start of that. Mm -hmm. As long as you have a story to tell, right? Use the camera that you have. How would you, if you're a, start, if you're a beginning photographer, right? You say, hey, I want to get into photography. You say, as long as you have a story to tell. I don't know what story I want to tell. What would you tell someone that maybe isn't sure what story they want to tell? I and mean, how would you tell them to figure out what story they want to tell? Yeah. I mean, there doesn't always have, like for photography, for instance, there doesn't always have to be a story. It can just be like the story could be you're in a beautiful place and you want to showcase that. For filmmaking, it's a little different because mm -hmm. there's obviously other factors that go into sure. it. And I think, so yeah, once you figure out what exactly you want your, like, your end goal to be in a story, then you can figure out the arc. You can figure out all the dynamics in within that story. But yeah, it's hard. Sometimes if you're, if you're just looking for a story, it's not going to come to you. You kind of have to let it, uh, you have to get inspired. I think that's my biggest piece of advice. And for me is like, go to an inspiring place, inspiring enter an inspiring place. like mindset, um, whether that's laying in your hammock out in the forest or going to the beach or whatever the case, sitting in your car and just zenning out to some bony bear or whatever, whoever you listen to, like, those are the, some of the things that inspire me. And I think being inspired really sort of jumpstarts creativity. So nice. that's, that'd be my yeah, recommendation. So I wanted to, you, you mentioned that you had some tips. I'm going to get into the section called let's get into it. And you said you had tips for taking better photos with the phone, the cameras that's in our pocket. Yeah. Right. I mean, I got I, my, I, you got, I got your my phone? phone right here. Okay. And do you have, you have an iPhone by chance? Have an iPhone. Okay. So I there, iPhone? I have a newer iPhone and it has some I have an older sort of, iPhone, but okay. Well, it should still work the same, okay. but there are some, some features on the new iPhones that are pretty mind boggling, both on the video I've heard and about the photo that, like, side. What do you have a 12, 13, 14? I have a 13, the one, not the newest yeah. one, the one prior, but it, right. it has like three different cameras on it or whatever, right. which is like crazy. Yeah. Um, and so what I do a lot of time, and I'll show you guys this, this is kind of okay. weird, but I, and I think you can still do this on your phone. My biggest tip here would be establish some depth of field. So for those of you who aren't super into photography, depth of field is, is separating your background from your, your, your foreground or your subject, for instance. Um, so you kind of want to create this, you can't really do it in an iPhone. They do it f like fraudulently with like the, the portrait mode or the cinematic mode, but you can mm -hmm create this sort of bokeh that's um, blurring the background and separating the the subject from the background. So you want that depth of field to show showcase uh, your subject. So the best way you can do that if you don't have portrait mode and um, it kind of is helpful because it compresses the image so well is you can, most iPhones have in the ability, let me see if you can see this right here. Okay. See the, the three little, oops. Those, those three little numbers there, it's probably okay. backwards on your screen. But on mine, it's 0.5 because I have a fisheye lens, mm -hmm. one and three. 
So almost always, I'll click on this three because, and whoa, that's like brings me really mm -hmm. <laughs> zoomed in. But that's going to really separate um, your your subject from the background, whatever mm -hmm. whatever it may be. If I'm looking here at my camera, um, it's separated so much from from its background because mm -hmm. of the compression. So that's going to give you a much more. It, some cameras, it's going to be a little bit less clear, but it's going to give you a much more um, aesthetically appealing image just by simply pressing one button. And that's my biggest, my biggest like hack. That's like easy, and you can use it on any camera. Um, there's some really fun hacks on on iPhones that I'm sure some people probably even know this, but one that I do is you can tap um, mm -hmm. for exposure for, and then you can hold focus on that as well. Um, but if you want, you can swipe. Let me see. I'm trying to do this all backwards. <laughs> um, see how that menu just popped up when I did that? You can kind of go up or... So hopefully you can see that. But in this, there's an exposure lock feature. So if you swipe down on here and say you're shooting outside in the sun mm -hmm. and you want something to be very um, silhouetted um, okay. and your, your camera's not really doing it, the AI and the phone is not really allowing you to do so, um, you can actually go in here and adjust the exposure and go mm -hmm. down and it will lock, um, which is huge because the iPhone loves to auto expose things. Right. So that's a huge plus if you're trying to get like a cool silhouette moment or if you're in a really dark setting and you really want to bump the exposure, you're going to get a little mm -hmm. ISO boost here, um, which is really helpful sometimes. So that's a really fun, easy uh, trick that you can do on any iPhone. Um, yeah. Another so one that I really like is live photos. I don't know if you've messed with live photos at all. I don't um, understand live photos. Yeah. Sometimes they're just a nuisance because it's like, oh, I'm being recorded after the, the photo video or the photo's done and I have this whole blurry mess. But what you can do, let me take a live photo here. This way for me. So we got a live photo there. And you can go in. I'll press uh, edit on my phone here. And then you can go in into the live photo tab here and you can pick whatever frame you want out of that entire live photo. So say you miss the shot, you can go in and click, oh, okay, I actually want this frame because someone was blinking in the, in the one that it captured automatically. So what? Yeah. Super, super clutch. I did not know that. Yeah. That's, that's the, the biggest thing you can do with it. What? Um, my favorite true. thing <laughs> is <laughs> I really like. There's a long exposure setting, which I think is super fun. Wait, where's this at? Long exposure. So while you talk, look for that, I'm just going to tell you, I have an iPhone XS, and I didn't have the depth of field option. My my cam, my phone has two cameras, not okay. three cameras, so I didn't have the depth of field option. But I did have the silhouette thing. I know that I can change. I know I can change the, um, the exposure. exposure, and I have a portrait mode. I know I have a portrait mode. And it has different lighting options, which I never messed yeah. with before. Portrait mode is super fun, and it and it kind of creates that fake uh, bokeh that I was talking about, right? With the the depth of field, it it kind of makes things a lot more shallow. Yeah. Here's a photo of my Diet Pepsi. Diet Pepsi, yeah, exactly. Diet. And I'll <laughs> I'll put that on the video. Maybe. Yeah, so there's there's a ton of features in that camera setting. If you just you can click up here and top top of that. Um, mm -hmm. and it will pop up with a bunch of different yeah. options down here and you can mess with the burst. Um, you can do all sorts of things. And I, like I said, the, the live photo version, if you click it's, I don't know if it's this way on your phone, but the top left, mm -hmm. um, it, it pops up with a little menu and you can make things like loop. So it'll kind of turn it into a video. Um, my favorite thing to do though, is say you're shooting a photo of, an object and there's a bunch of cars driving around it and you're like, oh man, that would look so cool if I could shoot that uh, statue or whatever without the cars. Um, well, instead of coming back at a different time of day, you can set your phone on the ground, take a live photo and come to this option right here and just called long exposure. And so let me see if you can see that. You're just going to click long exposure on this menu. And it's basically what it's going to do is it's going to blur. It's going to take all of the exposures that the camera made during the time that it was uh, filming that statue, for instance, and it's going to blur everything that was moving. Um, so by blurring that, it essentially makes things disappear like cars or whatever may have ruined your shot. Right. Mm -hmm. So 
that's another tip um, and a little trick. It's, it's hard to do like in a podcast setting, but um, if you practice with it, it's, it's pretty beneficial and it can actually really help you get some cool stuff. You can also um, do long exposures now, like actual long exposures on cameras and get like the night sky, which is crazy on your phone. Nice. Um, super fun. I mean, there's so many things you can do with the iPhone and I'm sure, and iPhones not even the nicest camera out there on, on phones, you know, it's like yeah. phones are so capable now as, as like storytelling devices and as cameras, I think, um, just learning all the little tips and tricks that your, that your device has, I think, um, applies to both the cinema cameras and, and, and phones, you know, I think there's so much there to be learned. And, wow. Yeah. Hopefully maybe Man, those are some great trip school. tips. Um, that is awesome. Thank you so much for that. Um, so let's get towards the end. I got a couple of questions for you on the way out. So the big question of the show in plus one, what is in plus one? It could be gear. I know you had a fancy camera. It could be another fancy, bigger, fancier camera that what is next on the docket. Maybe it's a, something that's that you're working on maybe a, a big photo shoot maybe you want to film your own movie um maybe i don't know i'm gonna leave it to you what's in plus one what's next for jet yeah Bunsen? there's a couple there's a couple things i think my biggest hope is to work more within the landscape of what i'm passionate about and that's that's being out outdoors skiing snowboarding hiking all those sorts of things so um, yeah, my, my hope is this next year to direct or produce and direct a commercial in that sphere. That's kind of on like a professional level on a more realistic level. I'm trying to move out of LA. And so, um, I guess the answer to that question is like N plus one is moving out of LA out of LA and seeing if it's still possible to work in this industry. And I think what we talked about with being inspired is so prevalent in that you have to be surrounded by inspiration and, and living in LA. Mm -hmm. like, like I said, I'm a big outdoors person, so it doesn't really yeah. do it for me, but being in a place that is inspiring for me and really pushing me to be creative, I think, um, is the next, the next thing it's the N plus one for me. So just seeing if that works on a, on a logistical scale is kind of trying to, yeah, my next step. So, yeah. Awesome. Okay. We have, that was all the main questions. I have a couple silly questions at the end. Um, okay. and I've, I've warned you about them. Uh, and you saw Gabe's episode, so you know, you kind of know about them. So the first silly question is, um, uh, and you've actually, you've shot some music videos, so you actually might have a good answer for this one. Um, I want you to, to just tell us a, a couple sentences or two and ca casually drop the name of the most famous person you've ever met. Okay. Um, it's hard to like the most famous because I haven't met anyone that's like, you know, Tom Hanks vibes, <laughs> but, um, I think Tracy Morgan is probably up there on like the most famous people I've met. That counts. Um, yeah. He's pretty okay. famous. Yeah, he's pretty famous. Um, name drop. <laughs> okay. That's your name drop card. Yeah. Okay. So that was cool. <clears throat> All right. That's pretty famous. All right. Um, by the transitive property, I know someone who knows Tracy Morgan. So. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> Six degrees oh. of Kevin Bacon. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, and then this is my favorite question. <laughs> It's going to be till the end of time. What is your favorite all-time cartoon theme song? Okay, so I'm not a huge cartoon fan. Um, Even when you were a kid, man? You didn't have I mean, one when you were a kid? I watched cartoons? Watch cartoons. I didn't really have like a, a favorite cartoon show, I don't think. But I think I know the answer for like what the best okay. cartoon theme song is. And it's because everyone my generation is obsessed with it and knows it like the back of their hand. And that's Spongebob. Spongebob. So I think, yeah. Okay. I think in my generation, okay, so many sure. people grew up on that. And it, it, as soon as you hear like, are you ready kids? Like everyone like, sure. Boom, they're, they're on it. So that's right. my, that's my answer. It's not my favorite. I don't even know. My favorite might be like something more obscure, but yeah, that's, I think that's, that would be my answer. All right. We got one for Spongebob. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, this has been a lot of fun. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah, man. Um, I really appreciate it. You have some, you've had some great answers. We are going to, if you're, uh, if you, if you are agreeable for it, we're going to drop some of your art in the Facebook group. Um, if that's okay with you, Yeah, totally. maybe you can share some, you're a member of the Facebook group now. 
right? Yeah. I don't know if you're, I don't know, whatever. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube or listening to this on Spotify or Stitcher or uh, wherever you're listening to this, um, we have a Facebook group. Come and, and join. People have started to jo- join up. It's a place where we can um, share our own passions and um, obsessions. We can share the project that we are working on, and uh, we can cheer each other on. We can share our art, and we can just be fans together. We can talk about the episodes if we want to, but that's not really the point. You know, I'm going to talk about the episodes, but the point is for us to kind of be champions for each other and in our in our own obsessions. You can also, I would really appreciate it if you shared this episode or liked it or subscribed or just did anything. Do one thing, just a like or a subscribe or a share. Find one person that you might enjoy this episode and send it to them. Um, if you're on uh, YouTube, give it a subscribe. If you're in uh, Spotify or Stitcher or whatever, just give it a like, make sure you follow it. Um, other than that, um, thank you so much for listening. Thank you, Jed, for coming. You've been amazing. This is Jed Robinson. Uh, how can people follow you if they wanted to see some of your art? Are you on the socials? I'm on. I'm on the socials. Yeah, we the have, socials. Uh, a. I don't. Sorry, I don't know why we said we. Uh, we. Like uh, yeah. The Jed um, Ro- Ro- <laughs> Robinson Incorporated. <laughs> yeah. The. Uh, interesting, but no. Um, I have Instagram. Hit me up. It's underscore Jedediah underscore. Um, you can check okay. out my website. It's just jedediahroberson.com. Definitely. I was just on there before we started up. Check out his website. He's got some amazing stuff on there. And I will also post that in the show notes. If you pull this up on your Spotify player or in YouTube, you'll have a link to his um, his website in there. You can see some of his art um, and some of the stuff he's making. Follow him there. You can follow this show on Instagram. You can follow this show on Facebook, whatever. We're going to get out of here. Until next time, guys, don't be a jerk. Thanks so much, Jed. We'll catch you guys next time.